Hi, my name is Jane Matranga, and in this video we're going to elongate the figure from eight and a half heads to nine heads, which is the more popular proportion. We'll um, also develop this figure in a more fashionable pose. Start by drawing a vertical line the length of the paper. Measure down one inch from the top edge and draw a perpendicular line. It doesn't matter how long it is. This is line zero. Then measure down an inch and a, half, an inch and a quarter until you get to nine. So we have our nine heads. So the top of the head is line zero. The bottom of the head is line one. We have line two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, just like we did in the first video, you'll start with a beautiful egg shape for the head, and then we'll draw the neck as a soup can. It can be clear. And then the shoulders is a smashed coat hanger. And remember, we drew a waste basket. We're going to make it just a little bit longer this time, so we start to inch down to nine heads rather than the first video, which was eight and a half heads. So remember the smile line we made to locate the elbows. We'll do that a little below line three, which will drop the pelvis lampshade form down below line four and put another smile line to locate the wrists. All right, from this point we're going to elongate this figure even more. So we'll take the ball bearings that we made for the shoulders and the hips and draw sticks for the upper arms down to the smile lines for the elbows, more ball bearings the lower arm down to the smile lines for the wrists. We'll draw the legs below line six and draw the knee. And then the lower leg down past line eight for the ball bearings for the ankles. And now we have plenty of room to draw the feet. Remember those were wedges of cheese and the toes and we'll come back up and do smaller wedges of cheese for the hands, fingers, a little wider at the bottom, a little narrower at the top, making sure the fingers don't get longer than the tops of the thighs. And very quickly, we'll put the cones in to fill her out. You can practice the shapes of these and perfect them later. Remembering that these come in toward middle, in between her legs. Wider at the top, tapering to each joint. And now our figure is nine heads. Draw your vertical and nine heads lines on your paper. The vertical line is also going to now become the balance line. And we'll use that as we work through this figure who's going to take a pose where her weight is on one foot rather than evenly distributed like in the first two figures. So draw the head. and the neck exactly the same. 
draw the bottom line of the coat hanger tilted. It doesn't matter what direction, but tilt it down. I'm tilting mine down to the left, my left. <clears throat> and then draw the waste basket tilted as well, making sure that the top and the bottom of the waste basket, those lines are parallel. Now let's move over to the, the lower torso or pelvis shape. Draw this lampshade, also tilted, and make sure that the top and bottom lines of the lampshade are parallel. Now we're going to connect these in a way by creating sort of a spine backbone by taking your ruler and connecting the corners, creating an X in each form, and then starting here at your clavicle, we're going to draw a line through the X of the wastebasket and curve it around and draw the line right through the X of the pelvis. And this simulates the backbone. Now let's go back and put in your shoulder ball bearings and your hip ball bearings. We're going to wait on the elbows and the knees because they're going to go in different directions. Now in order for this person not to fall down, we need to get her balanced leg sort of under her throat. So draw the first leg. Remember, we're going nine heads, so make her knee down below the line six. And come inward again, a little closer to the center line, which is the balance line now. And then we can put her feet in right here. This will keep her from looking like her legs are far apart, and it will keep this foot under her body and keep her from falling over. Now this leg needs to come down a little lower than this leg. So we go down and down. This is the relaxed leg. And this leg can go in any direction. It can go out, it can go in and out, it can come in. It can do a lot of things because your weight is on this leg. And again, we'll keep with the down direction. So the ankle here is also lower than the ankle of the support foot. Now back up here. Usually if your balance leg is on this side and this shoulder is lower, you're counterbalanced and you probably put your hand on this higher hip. So we'll come back here and find that smile line for the elbows, making sure that our upper and lower arms on each side are rather equal in length. Now this takes some maneuvering because sometimes you need to change the direction of, a, of the upper and lower arms to get the right effect and keep the arm lengths even. And then I'm going to come in and make the ball bearing for the wrist and tilt that wedge of cheese up here and then put the fingers down there. Measure this arm, make it similar over here, and take this wedge of cheese and put the fingers there. Okay, let's fill her out now. Put your cones. You overlap slightly here.
Okay, and there's our infrastructure for someone who's in more of a relaxed stance. And again, remember, this is all there to help you build your figure. Soon you won't have to put all these in, but they're there for you to use and edit as need be as you develop your figures in different poses. Getting in the habit of working with continuous lines so you're not making sketchy, scratchy lines. Keep her nice and smooth and graceful. It all takes practice, but you can do it. <laughs>